Our next guest is a hilarious actor and comedian. Her name is Rachel Bloom. She's the Emmy and Golden Globe winning creator. Did you hear that part? Emmy and Golden Globe mm. winning. Mm -hmm. Star of the TV series Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I love that title. Her new Netflix special is called Death, Let Me Do My Special. Bloom discusses the complicated birth of her daughter and the death of her writing partner during this pandemic. So once a day, I went to the hospital and I would go to the NICU and just see my daughter for as long as I could. And I, I saw the tubes start to come out. I saw the heart monitors start to come off. I saw her get plumper and plumper and she started to look like my father and then also my husband and my husband kind of looks like my father and that's another show. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Rachel's got lots of material, I'll just say that. Rachel Bloom, welcome. It's so good to see you. Thank you for having me. Also, Love today's her. a really uh, insane and intense day for the country, so Florida. thank you yes. for having me on here to Well, in a day like this, we, this, we like having okay, you good. on Okay, good. It light, lightens up. It's, about, it's a special about death, but we'll try to yeah. keep it silly and light. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No, no but I, there's a part in the special where you, you take us into the into the delivery room and you were actually singing during labor. So I thought she's my hero because I remember labor screaming, making primal sounds. I didn't even know where it's possible that I ended up apologizing to the staff <laughs> as I was like, look, I'm so sorry, I'm so embarrassed. And there you are, you are singing during the delivery. Well, I had, I had a beautiful epidural by that point, you have to mm. understand. So um, I was induced actually. And so I labored for like 20 minutes, you know, cause they gave me the Pitocin. So believe me, I made primal sounds. And then during the epidural, I squeezed the nurse's hand yeah. so hard. She was mad. Yeah. She was like, okay. She's like, look, lady, <laughs> wow. I'm trying to help you. Yeah. But this whole special came about during the pandemic. You had an epiphany because you had back to back uh, really serious things happen to you. Yeah. So this special was kind of my way of working out how I felt about everything that happened during 2020. Basically, I gave birth in late March. Thick of the pandemic, the night I gave birth, I found out my songwriting partner uh, not only had COVID, but was already on a ventilator for COVID across the country in New wow. York. And then yes. he uh, passed away a, a week after my daughter was born. And it was kind of this, it felt like being dunked in, in ice water. And it was just this uh, shock. And I think it was, look, a heightening of the shock we were in some ways all in. I think everyone in 2020 went through their own Mm -hmm. trauma and, and shock in many different ways. And trauma is not a contest, right? Trauma is trauma. Um, so the, but the special was very, it was very much me asking the question, how do I acknowledge death, but continue to live? Mm. Yeah. How do I integrate this knowledge into my life? And don't forget it, don't live in denial, but, but not be frozen by the fact that someday I and everyone I love yeah. will die. And it could happen any second. So once you're intentional about that, taking, trauma and then turning it into a special. Um, were there moments where you are prepping for what you're going to do on stage where it became heavy for you, where emotions poured out of you? Yeah, I mean, the whole thing was really cathartic to talk about, especially because I only started workshopping this special uh, more than a year after everything had happened because the world was on lockdown. Yes. Yeah. So I think it, look, had I taken these stories to the stage a month, two months after, I don't think I would have been able to do that. I couldn't look at pictures or photos of Adam or videos of him for months after. Because it was a year I had processed it, processed it but also was still figuring out what my mindset was gonna look like. So right. it felt like, it felt cathartic. It was like vomiting emotion, basically. I actually, I actually wanna linger on that for a moment because uh, you know, laughter is medicine, people in the audience are processing their own things and they're benefiting from your experience and you had to work through something in creating the show. But, but unlike a memoir, which is done and then on paper, you have to revisit this in every performance. Yeah. Now it's now on tape and people can press play, but like, how did you go back to it? It was hard. It, it was especially hard, I'll say. I did a, my last run of the show that I just did a couple months ago at, at Steppenwolf in Chicago. I'd already filmed the special. It was solidly four years after everything. That was actually the hardest part in being like, all right, in the second half of the show, I revisit this, the worst week of my life. And because at that point I was past it, it was almost harder to put myself back in that place as opposed to for most of the time I was doing the show, I was kind of still in that place right. where the world was uh, recovering. Mm. Um, 
And I, I think, I think, look, what was also hard is I, I never created a show intending to make people cry, but mm -hmm. sometimes in the audience people would be crying, and it, and I didn't know sometimes whether to like stop and make space for that or just carry on. And mm. and most of the time, if not all the time, I just carried on and let yeah. people have emotions. But that's something I'd never had experience with, mm. was being on stage. I've been on stage comedy. I've never been on stage, powering through people crying and yeah, having yeah. those kind of intense emotions. And, and in addition to this, you break out into song in the middle. Yes, I do. That's the other thing that happens. Dance. You, yeah, you break out into song and you start dancing in the middle of something that's very heavy. I want people to know your daughter's okay. My daughter's, past, my daughter fine. is fine. And I think yes. it's important for people to understand 10 to 15% of all babies born go to the NICU. Yeah. No one had told me that. I thought that the NICU was reserved for premature babies or, 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 or severe complications and I'd had a normal pregnancy. I had a pretty mm -hmm. seamless birth. My, I labored for 20 minutes. So, so if your child goes to the NICU, it, yeah. it's okay. Like, it, I'm not yes. okay, but it's, it happens more than we talk about. Yes. Yeah, no doubt. Really well, Rachel Bloom, right. thank you so much for joining us. You are immensely talented, yeah. talented. We appreciate you. Rachel said, yes, I am. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> she just nodded her head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Death, uh, Let Me Do My Special can be streamed on Netflix October 15th.